Hi guys, Ethan here, and we are back for our last video with Sprig that we will be doing unless we get the opportunity to maybe see him this fall or something like that. Um, I've got Josh here, we're up at Riverstone Kennels, and we're going to do a few rundowns. This is kind of an evaluation of where he's at and where he's gonna need to go from there. Josh is the master with this stuff, so basically, we're gonna set up what? Talk this. Talk us through this here. What are we gonna set up to start with? So what we're looking for is we're wanting to see his, his steadiness, his composure on his retrieves. We wanna see his marking, and then we wanna see that, that retrieve and delivery. And so what we're gonna do is we down here, we have a couple holding blinds set up. Those holding blinds are meant to hide the throwers. Uh, it's very strategic that we have a very experienced thrower down there in Taylor because uh, she's gonna be able to uh, aid Sprague in any help that he may need. Um, but we're gonna do you know, singles first and then we're gonna move into doubles and uh, we'll kind of talk through that when we get there. So a lot of this is gonna be new. We've done some simple marking with Sprig, but we definitely haven't done uh, hardly any double work. So we'll be able to evaluate that, what that looks like and then be able to show you kind of how to work through those beginning stages. Now, anybody that's been following along with this series has seen we've put a lot of emphasis on obedience. We put a lot of emphasis on steadiness. We put a lot of emphasis on delivery and retrieving work and all of that leads up to this. You can't have what we're about to work on unless you've put in the groundwork. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. This guy's gonna direct me and help us get, uh, get this stuff rolling. Ready, Sprig? Heel. All right, we're gonna sit down to begin with. Does that work? Yeah, that's right. perfect, that's perfect. So we're gonna bring him around on our side, make sure that I'm out of the way. Now, our thrower, you talked about experience with the thrower. What is gonna be happening there for a young dog? So the, one of the big reasons why we use a thrower down here uh, is that one, Taylor knows that she's watching Sprague. So if, if she's trying to get his attention, we like to use quacks or hey, hey, hey. And if, if Sprig is not looking in that direction, she's not gonna throw that mark. Um, she's gonna be reading him the entire time just as we're reading him. Uh, but it's important that she can read him very well, even at a distance, right? So then we're strategically using white bumpers right now because we want him to be able to use his eyes, really watch you know, that go down. Uh, again, we're trying to aid him right now. If we're using orange bumpers, um, you know, it's gonna be much more difficult for him to be able to pick up and find. So we wanna be using you know, what we can to our advantage to help him. Again, this is a young dog. We're trying to give him all the advantages that we can. So now we've had a lot of people ask about uh, wingers or electron launchers or things like that. I mean. Have you used those in these situations? Or, I mean, is it really better to have a, a bird boy or somebody down there throwing? Yeah, so we use a lot of those tools in all of our training. One, like if you're by yourself, it really aids you in, you can do these things at a distance, you can do you know, multiple setups. You know, wingers are a great tool for that. The hard part is, is that, uh, say again, for a young dog, if he struggles and he doesn't push through on an extended mark like this, a winger can't aid him to continue to go forward. Oh, that makes great sense. Yeah, so what Taylor's gonna do is, she, hopefully she doesn't have to do it at all, but if she does, she will gradually kind of peek out from behind that, uh, that blind and aid him and, sh and by Sprig seeing her is gonna give him the confidence to push through Keep at pushing. that distance. Keep pushing. Uh, a lot of dogs get hung up. This is not something to get stressed out about. If you're a young dog, if you're just starting to extend your marks and you see them get hung up, it's actually totally natural. Okay. What we find is that so many owners at home, they throw so many marks for their dogs. Yeah, hand thrown. For... Exactly, and naturally you can only throw what? 15, 20 yards? I don't know about you. I can probably throw 26 <laughs> yards, but. So, so I'm a 20 yard guy. So <laughs> at 20 yards, if I give him hundreds of retrieves at 20 yards, yeah. naturally, you know, we think we're doing great things. We probably are in some ways, but we don't realize the bad habits we're creating such as, giving him this little mental clock going, okay, at 20 yards, it should be here. And so sometimes extending dogs out is a, is a pretty big hurdle where this is where having someone like Taylor is a major, major um, you know, deal for us as we work through this. So we're gonna have our first mark come out up over here we are. and drop out to the left, our left basically. About what's that distance gonna be? Somewhere 50 so? Yeah, that would be probably like in, in that 60 to 65 yard 60 range. 65 yards. Yeah, and so what we're looking for here, um, there's actually something else that uh, there's a reason that we're set up where we are and this is that we're running downhill okay and so this is a big piece when we introduce our young dogs naturally it's easier for them to extend out with that momentum going with them running downhill rather than pushing uphill or on a side hill that will naturally pull they them away pull from the mark 
Yep, so so he's gonna run straight downhill on this. And so we're hoping that that momentum also helps him. I mean, everything is about building confidence at, the, at this point. So yep. having Taylor as an aide, running downhill, using white bumpers, we're putting everything in his court, which hopefully will help him be successful. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. Oh, we're gonna be focusing on guys is keeping him steady. Good. Sit. Spring. On this, we're sending him with his name. It's a mark. Uh, we wanna see some patience, but not make him wait forever. We'll be able to extend that a little bit more as we go. Good boy, good boy. Nice job. Sit. Good. All right, I'm going to pivot myself around just a little bit to give him a clear view of what's coming out here to our right now. Sit. Uh, uh. Spring. You can really see how he runs this with purpose. He's got a really solid hard line directly to those. A lot of confidence that he's going the right direction to make this retrieve. Good boy. All right, what do you think, Josh? Well, there's a lot of things that I really like and, and a lot of this, you know, where when we deal with clients or people talk to us about some of the things you just mentioned, right? Like, you know, running with a purpose, you know, a good pace back, um, breaking down and hunting in the right area. A lot of that stuff at this point, I mean, that's breeding. Right. Sure. I mean, that's yeah, something 100%. That, yeah, we, we, I didn't teach him this. Yeah, well, you, you taught him <laughs> a lot. So, so I'm not trying to take away from that at all. But what we're trying to say is like the whining, like the composure. You know, Absolutely. Or he, he does not whine at all, but I'm saying a dog that does whine, a lot of that at this stage is breeding. And so as we look at a lot of things he's doing really well, yeah, it's great. It's going to make you, know, you and I look you know, great. Shh. as uh, He yeah. makes me look good. <laughs> I'm telling you, I <laughs> this is not Todd stuff. I mean, we set some things up, but um, I've, I mentioned that a lot, you guys that have watched through the series is, you know, I say, hey, look how well he did this. And it's because he's well-bred. And we talk about that a lot. People ask us, well, can I have my, this dog learn to be a duck dog or learn to be a bird dog? And we say, well, yeah, you can, but you're way better off starting with somebody that's put a lot of time, effort, and energy into producing a dog designed for the task that you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's one thing that we struggle with. Uh, I actually spoke to a client this morning that has a dog that uh, is not this caliber. Sure. Right. And so he wants in the worst way for his dog to be there. And his hope was that he that we could teach any dog anything. And that's not the case, no. right? I mean, you have to have, you know, that that dog, just like a kid as an athlete, you have to have the kid that is built uh, both mentally and physically for the job. And that's here too. I mean, look at him, how composed he is. He's still involved, right? He's still waiting for, okay, what's going on next? But I love how composed he is. He can come in and shut that off. And the big reason why we're looking for that as retriever you know, owners and breeders is that a lot of these dogs are being used as duck dogs. Sure. So in a waterfall saying, the last thing I want to do is listen eight hours of whining and crying and all this it's nonsense. Horrible. Oh my it's gosh, horrible. I want to rip my eardrums out after a half hour. <laughs> and uh, you know, so a dog like this, he's just a pleasure you know, to hunt with. But Absolutely. then of course this transfers into the home too, right? He's, he can be composed, he can be you know, very relaxed and he can have that off switch that so many of us specifically in family situations are looking for. Yeah, if you guys watch, um, <laughs> look back through a series, one of the last videos we did we talked about building patience and steadiness. And we showed some drills how we worked through this to kind of help develop what he naturally had in him. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's a great point too, because uh, like we talked about before we started, I mean, I really believe that that the whining and the vocalization is breeding. Sure. But you can make a quiet dog noisy by absolutely doing a lot of the wrong things. Yep, so that foundational can. training is a huge piece of this. Perfect. What do we need to set up for him next? Well, you so what we're going to do now, so I love what I saw on these singles. What we're going to do is our introduction to doubles. Okay. And so Baby doubles. Exactly. Yeah. We're, we're not asking too much. We want to see some very introductory things here. And so what we're doing again, Taylor being you know very good at what she does is a very big piece of this. But what we're going to do is if you if this is your dog at home, what I would recommend Sit. is run one of these marks quite a few times. And we're essentially creating a memory. And what a memory is, is just, it's gonna help him uh, remember, okay, there was one, or I've went to this area a lot. And what we want is confidence, right? We want him to go to that memory marks. We want him to get the, the, the first mark that comes out is gonna be his memory. We're gonna okay. leave that. Yep. 
We're going to come to his, what we're going to call his go bird or his mark, which is going to be the one he goes to retrieve first. But then what I'm saying is that we've conditioned him to run this one. So when he comes back, even if he doesn't in, immediately come back and say, I remember where that is, mm -hmm. he should still have the confidence to go down in that area and become su successful with that retrieve, building his confidence and thus becoming successful in multiple marks. Okay, so um, we've done a few already, guys. We've done a few of these singles. And I said, this looks really cool. I wanna show what this you know, baby doubles, as I'm referring to it now, um, intro to doubles is gonna look like with him so that we can watch the learning process. Um, he's been better on the left, very, very confident with that. So we're gonna use that as the memory. Correct. That bumper is gonna be thrown first. Right. Then we're gonna throw out the second bumper, his go bird, mm -hmm. okay? And we will send him for that. And I'm going to, to help keep his focus to that, we're gonna send him relatively quickly, where I've waited a little bit on these first singles. We're gonna send him relatively quickly while he's focused on that. Then when he comes back, we'll turn around and try and get him uh, headed in the right direction for that memory. Mm -hmm. And so you know, if you rewind a little bit, uh, one thing that you did really led to you, this is such a process, right? Where step A leads to step B and to C. What you did here, as far as uh, you mentioned it, when you went to the second mark, you healed him over and got his body position yeah. ready to go. That's huge because now that again will help aid him going, okay, I know when, I, when I'm lined up here, I'm going towards this mark. When yep. I'm lined up here, I'm going towards this mark. It's all about building confidence. Uh, we should mention why we send on the second thrown bird first. And this is really important because yep. first mark again is our memory. Second bird is go bird. We're gonna pick that one up first. The reason we do that is because if we pull him off that and ask him to go get the first one first, we've now created two memories. That makes sense. Which is much more difficult, gotcha. right? So let's let him look at that one that just fell, go pick that one up, because that should be his easy one, Yep. and then come back and challenge him with that one that he remembers. Now, uh, advanced stuff down the road, will you ever do that by creating two memories, or is it kind of a no-go from a training standpoint? Well, it, it's, it's kind of a no-go as far as like a competition standpoint, sure. because naturally you want to be very efficient and the most efficient way is to, instead of creating three, uh, say three uh, memories, we have one go bird and two memories. Sure. But one thing that we always do in training is we're trying to challenge, right? So we will once in a while pull them off that go bird and create three memories, especially if we have a dog that say is having a hard time breaking down and hunting in the correct area or has a hard time uh, remembering where certain marks are. Uh, that's all a big part of this process. But right now, introductory, we're wanting him to be successful. Perfect, let's get this set up here. Heel, uh, 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 around this way, come on. One, two, good. Sit. Heel. Ah, ah, ah. Heel. Spring. Nice job, buddy. Oh, he missed it just a little bit. It's in that taller grass. Cut back up the hill, Bubba. Right there. Very nice, nice job. <whistles> Good. Heel. Sit. Good. All right, now we're going to try and get focus. I'm going to stand up for this. Gives me the uh, ability to pull a better line off of where he's looking. Back. Atta boy, atta boy, good. Good job. Heel. Good. I loved it. So a couple things just notes that, that yeah. I have as you went through that. Yeah, all our advantages worked for us, right? Running downhill carried that momentum, that white bumper, it was in a shorter grass, so it gave yeah. them the confidence to push through it. One thing that I think uh, sometimes people get hung up on sure. is he didn't step right on that mark, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes people would say, well, that's not a good mark. I would actually argue you know, almost the opposite of where here's a young dog learning how to do this. 
And I thought it was fantastic how he broke down, hunted his way back, and was efficient in, in recovering that, that mark. Didn't really, give up on it. Yeah, in a hunting situation, that's what we're looking for. We don't want a dog to run right out there. If he doesn't step right on it, runs right back and is not confident. Exactly. I mean, this was a dog that naturally broke down, hunted in the correct area, which is key. He wasn't all over the place out of control and was very successful. I loved that. I like it. What do we do now? Uh, well, really, you know, from here, what we can do is, uh, as we start to kind of advance through this thing, we'll start to introduce the gun. Okay. And so we're swinging, you know, with, uh, with the gun going from, you know, mark one, you know, to mark two. And what we're trying to do is just teach him how the gun represents where these marks are going. But also uh, incorporate steadiness around some correct. gunfire too. Correct. So correct. we have done that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Kat. We've done some steadiness work with gunfire. Yes. <laughs> I don't always remember. Um, we want to run one more and then call that it for him yep. as this introduction. Does that look good? That's what I would do. Yeah, let's end on a very successful note. Okay. So we've got shotgun. I don't know if I've ever used one of these before. It's camouflage. It's the wrong <laughs> color. Let's see here. Sit. Would you a like to poppers. shoot or would you like to just use the gun? Whatever you think. So normally what we would do as a progression yep. is we would go without the shot first just to get him to kind of understand, you know, that gun. Mm -hmm. um, what I would likely do with this is uh, if we're running this as a double, I would run it in the reverse order that we just did because it's much easier, again, teaching him with the gun to push him rather sense. than pull him. That makes right? sense. Right? And so... You can uh, cut him off. That way you're... Exactly. Yeah. Well, and, and you're being your dominant with your body, you know, right? As far as you're moving into him, so naturally he's going to move with you. Where Perfect. if he's zoned in here and you move away, it's much harder for him to pull you know, off with you. So um, we would normally go without the shot first and then progress you know, to the shot. Mm -hmm. But if you've already done the steadiness you know, to, uh, to the shot, incorporated that. Then I think you're good to go. All right, let's do it. All right. So again, think about this, guys. Just because we're rolling through this, it's because we've done all of these steps leading up to it. So you're gonna go one shot, two shots. What's your sequence typically look like? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go one shot Eel. as it's basically at the at the highest peak of the arc. Sit. I'll shot. And then here's a big part of this. And so especially when you start incorporating the gun, okay. it's very tempting to move fast, yeah. right? And because you are thinking about more, especially we see this a lot in hunt test situations where uh, you move from say a started level where you don't have to handle a gun mm -hmm. to a seasoned level where you do have to handle a gun. And now there's so much more for the handler to think about that naturally you just move really fast. Okay. And so what I always tell people is shoot at the top of the arc, follow it to the ground and hold it there for a two or three count just for your sake and for the dog's sake let him kind of soak in where that landed yep and then y'all shuck the shell out and then move and what uh, what i'm trying to do is just let him have that time i remember where that is now you know push him off of it and let's go get this uh this second one which now our go bird is on our left versus on our right makes sense one shot per bird that's right got it yep. one sit two Ah! That, folks, is an accident. At the same time, at this point in his training, we don't really want to discourage that. He's ready to go. We just need to be prepared next time to do better. And maybe, new place, new set of things, maybe we're getting a little bit greedy here. Uh-huh. I'm going to try one more. Ha ah, ha ha. Just because I know how cool this guy is, but we're going to be Paying just a little bit more attention. One little reminder here, sit, sit. All right, let's go ahead and try one more here. Sit. Ah. Ah, 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 ah. No. Much better, much this way. Struggling a little bit, but breaking down again. Atta boy. Good stuff. Just a little love talk, not a lot. Talking too much um, gets, I heard it referred to one time as syrupy. 
Serpy talk just causes distractions. All right, heel, sit, back. Good boy. Folks, that looks pretty. That looks pretty. Good job, buddy. Good. Hold. That's sloppy on me. Good. All right, so that was fun. We got to see a little mistake. We got to see how to work through that. I didn't use any correction other than I tried to stop him verbally once, but ultimately, it's gonna be better for him to go and then us, me, the trainer, be better prepared for that next time, knowing that he could potentially make the mistake again. So I set up, I was ready, I talked to him just a little bit more to keep that steadiness going. And then we didn't incorporate a second shot just so that we could work through that and get some success with this more challenging situation. So I, I love, not to cut you off, but I no. loved that after that vocalization that, that you made to try yep. to stop him, that you let him go. Yeah. I think that's way too often, especially when you talk about steadiness, you think about that's the ultimate prize out there, right? So and when he leaves, if you don't catch him in the first two steps, he's mentally moved on to the retrieve. Yes. So if he's halfway there, then you get the collar out, you're yelling, you're screaming, you're making the correction. For him, he's mentally moved on. He now thinks he's being corrected for that retrieve, which exactly. he's not. And exactly. you did you did exactly what I would have you know, coached any of our, our clients to do, which is at that point, praise him. He's doing the right thing. And then you'd already laid the groundwork. You gave him that correction, that little vocalization of, hey, I remember you got to be steady. And he was, he was great the second time. It's perfect. Um, now, guys, what we're going to move into is we're going to do a little bit to watch Brock work. Now, Brock is actually um, Josh and Whitney's, one of their stud dogs and Spriggy's dad. So we're going to set him up. Um, he's got to work out some jitters, get some of the off of his chest. We're gonna have him set up over here and watch what a finished dog and what he ultimately can be down the road. Let's get set up for that. Good, heel. All right guys, so we've got Brock here, which again, we said was Spriggs' dad. What are we gonna set up for him? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run more of uh, what we consider a, a senior, or I'm sorry, a finished or a master type setup. Okay. Where we're really gonna challenge him now with his marking. Uh, so we're gonna run a triple mark, mm -hmm. uh, which obviously increases the difficulty that much more. Uh, we're gonna be using orange bumpers in this, which is actually a little uh, counterproductive of what we had originally talked about as far as using you know whites for marks. And the reason we're doing that is that this is early in the year. So we have very little cover, and so if we use white bumpers for an advanced dog like this, it'd be really easy. Yeah, see it a mile away. You sure. know? So we're trying to uh, make it so he has to truly mark, hunt in that area, be efficient with it. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I have a triple mark, and then after the triple mark, uh, I have a blind set up that he's actually gonna have to run uh, past the old fall. Oh, cool. uh, and what we're try trying to challenge him with there is don't stop where you picked up the mark. This is a blind, you know you're supposed to run the line, keep going until I tell you to stop and give you a direction or a cast. Absolutely. Guys, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the drone up in the air so that we can kind of see a little better vantage point of what's going on. And then we've also got Sprig set up right back here, sit. We've got a little platform for him here. Before he was sitting on the ground, now we've got something to make this a little easier because he's gonna actually have to watch another dog. Um, and then I'm gonna be handling him to make sure he's not breaking with the gunfire and all of the other things. So just incorporating a little bit of steadiness for him. So we're gonna incorporate uh, the full barrage of uh, distractions here. So we're gonna start with the duck call. <laughs> Spriggs says, I never heard a duck call like that. It sounds real. <laughs> Heel, heel. Rock. Had a little uh, shelf failure on the second one, that's all right. <laughs> hey, it happens to everybody. That's right, good boy.
good boy. Heel. Uh, uh, uh. Right down here. Out of the way. Rock. A lot of times people will ask, how do I know which one to send him on next? And a lot of times I'll just let the dogs choose, you know? So he came back, looked right at that mark right there. Good boy, stepped right on it. That's fantastic. That's good, that's really good. Yeah, he's, he's a great marking dog and a great lining dog. Good boy. Come on, bud. Nice job. Good. All right. So this one is intentionally shorter. Where is it? Very good. Very nice. You can see how uh, how the orange really does disappear to them. He was going to run right over that. He stepped right on it. <laughs> oh, there good it is. Boy. <laughs> good boy. Heel. Good. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and turn this here so we've got a good look. Right in the center of the screen is where we're sending it. Right on the far side, right? For the blind? Uh, yes, we're going to run them right up the middle, right? Yep. Or do you want the far side? No, no, here? no, no. Okay. Far side, of the, just to the right of the little pond there. Yep, yep. Right, exactly. That's right in the center of the screen right now, guys. Yep. So what I'm doing is I'm running him past uh, his, what would have been his go bird. Um, and I also, I'm challenging him running between his second mark that he picked up. Uh, I don't want him to pull off to either one. I want him to trust his training, take that line, um, and really not stop unless I give him that cue to do so. I like so. it. Heel. This is where reading him is very important. I want to basically draw a straight line you know, through his spine, through the top of his head. Back. <laughs> I don't like it gets much better than that. Man, it's, it's, uh, I promise everyone we did not practice that. That's just Brock. <laughs> Brock is just, he uh, he's a straight line runner. He does a fantastic job um, with all of that work. It's just, it's almost hard to give him a cast once in a while. Good boy. Good job. Heel. But kind of going back to Sprig, like we talked about running with yeah. purpose. I mean, you can see where he gets it, right? Absolutely I mean, he, he you just, can. He, he runs with purpose. Absolutely you can. Good boy, buddy. All right, guys, thanks everybody for watching. Josh, thanks for working us through this today. We really appreciate the opportunity to get to work with you on Sprig. He's an absolutely fantastic dog. If you guys are looking for a young uh, lab that can turn into something great, definitely give these guys a call. I appreciate it. How can it. we uh, reach out to you? How can they reach out to you? Well, you can find us on social, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Riverstone Kennels. Uh, we try to do a lot of content on there. Uh, you can kind of keep up with the dogs, specifically over hunting season. We really like to show specifically our stud dogs uh, in action. So we have a lot of hunting you know, video and content awesome. up there. Um, otherwise, our website, riverstonekennels.com. You can get in contact with us there as well. You heard the man. Thanks everybody for watching. I'm the guy with the pink gun and we will catch you next time.